Well, folks, you've been demanding this all week over in my now nightly Twitch streams while we wait for FM21. But I am nothing if I am not a man who likes to please. You wanted it. Here it is. It's a tour of the new office. But before we get into that, obviously, I have just mentioned FM21 is very much on the horizon. It would be remiss of me as a football manager, content creator, uh, not to remind you several things. Firstly, several thing. Number one, I do have a beta save that is going to be starting the moment the uh, the beta drops here on YouTube. It's going to be with Leicester. Um, it will be out the day the beta comes out, whenever that day may be. So make sure you subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss out on the Leicester beta save. There's also going to be a beta save over on Twitch where, like I say at the moment, because I'm not really uploading videos here because I'm finished FM20 here, um, I'm streaming pretty much daily on Twitch at the moment. Link to that is down in the description below um, and I'm going to be switching straight over into a beta save with the team I support, Peterborough, over on Twitch as soon as the beta drops. Um, and of course, if you haven't yet pre-ordered your copy of Football Manager, thus guaranteeing yourself beta access, um, you can do that using my link, which is down at the top of the description. It gets you a little bit of a discount over what you pay on the Steam price um, and also supports the channel as well. So it's win-win for all concerned. But enough of that. You're not here for all that. If you've watched the last couple of videos on the channel, you already know all that. So let's have a little look around the office, shall we? And what better place to start than outside my fancy new door? You might think a door is not a big deal. I've worked out of a garage for five years. I never had a door before and having a door means I get to have a doormat. So I've got my football manager doormat right next to my front door as well, which doesn't get a football manager doormat, but we have the football manager doormat. And even more exciting than that, I never thought I'd get away with this, but on moving day, I stuck one of my home shirts out here in the hallway, thinking I'd be told to move it. I haven't been told to move it. So we have a home shirt and we have a football manager doormat. So you know the other side of this door is where the magic happens. And if we come in here, um, you can see we have the office or the cupboard as I'm referring to it. Because as you can see, it's not huge. Um, we've got the door there with a born shirt on the back of it, the computer there, and not much in the way of leg space. As you can see, we've got something Dave's brought in, which I don't think was ever alive, um, but not much in the way of foot space in here. And you can see the carpet's a little bit ropey and getting worse because I'm sliding around on it all the time. But let's, uh, let's start the tour from this side of the room, I guess, and show you what we've got. So above the door, we have my first ever Peterborough United scarf and a Bourne shirt. These shirts on the back of the door will rotate. And in fact, I've got a pack of four of these hooks, so I might end up having three shirts on the back of the door, because one thing you will notice is there's no um, Kings Lynn shirt, there's no Nuneaton shirt, there's no, there's very few shirts. We've just got one of the new home shirts and the Bourne shirt from last year, and everything else is currently packed away in the cupboard under the stairs. You'll be pleased to know, although you can't see him on stream or in video, Stone Cold has made it over, and he's got my football manager sweeper keeper hat on because Stone Cold has gone cool. Um, and then we've got one of the bookcases that we used to have in the garage. We used to be able to fit two of these in, so it does mean I've had to half the, uh, the amount of toys and comics. There's been a little bit of a landslide, which I'm gonna need to fix in there. But I've had to put half of these, again, in the cupboard under the stairs, and probably gonna have to look to sell some stuff or maybe put some stuff in storage but you can see I've got my favorite ever pop vinyl at the top there which is my uh, Wonder Woman in her invisible jet enormous pop vinyl fugglers everywhere this light I need to move down to this shelf I think because when I set it up I didn't realize just how little space I had so you can't actually see that light in the shot when I'm sat at my desk and it's a cool light so I need to move it down a shelf I've got my LifeX beam in the background that I can change color on for a little bit of background light and of course my lovely Pac-Man light down there as well I know there's no danger mouse in the new office or no big danger mouse you can see there is a small danger mouse down the bottom and also a small danger mouse cardboard cutout just there as well people often ask to look at the pops so like I say, this is about half of the collection, um, but I'll just very quickly pan through them so that you can see what I've got in the way of pops and comic books. These are basically my favorite ones and everything else has been put into storage under the stairs. 
We've got the home shirt there. We've got a load of cool art pieces up here. This is um, a piece of uh, DC Bombshells art by Babs Tarr, who is the artist on the uh, Batgirl comic series, Batgirl of Burnside, that I really loved a few years ago. These pictures, these two, um, I got off a guy on Twitter whose name escapes me. Hopefully he's watching and can identify himself, but these are four Peterborough United legends drawn comic book styles. We've got Chris Turner, Ken Chattery, George Boyd, Craig McHale Smith. And this, by the same guy, is the winning team from the playoff final Old Trafford against Huddersfield done in the form of Sabutio players, which I think is really cool in the kit that we wore that day. That art was um, when I was had a Nuneaton program cover made. They had a season where they had every program cover was a player drawn in this style by the club artist, and they did a copy for me as well as uh, as King Kev, it was labelled as, that they sent over. In fact, that was handed to me when we went to watch Nuneaton at the end of the Nuneaton series when a few of us went over there, which was very cool. Just a guy walked up to me on the terraces and handed me a picture of me that he'd drawn, which was amazing. Um, and there we've got some Marvel stamps that I was sent for a, a brand deal a little while ago that I actually thought quite cool, so I stuck them up on the wall. Then we've got my cupboard. Oh, hold on. Not one of these. You don't see a lot of this in the Football Manager community. Um, and I've left space for the one for this channel as well. So that's for my vlog channel. That's where the one for this channel is going to go. Hopefully in the next year, we've got a few of my favourite bits and pieces on top of the cupboard. Uh, my AEW World Championship, a few more Fugglers. Little bits of FM merch from over the years. So that's an FM12 um, little beanie ball. And that's an FM, I think that's FM09 notebook. There's a couple of other notebooks around as well. A few more pops. My signed uh, Wicked and the Divine, which is going to go up framed on the wall at some point. Um, signed by the, the artist and the writer. A couple more home shirts over there on top of my PS4, which will very soon evolve into a PS5. This cupboard's not very interesting. This is just my camera bag with all my bits and pieces in from when I'm vlogging. And this cupboard is just full of gear, largely camera gear, computer gear. I'm not gonna go through all that and show you what's in there. My drone's in there. A bunch of cameras and lenses and things are in there. It's not that exciting. Um, that is my Elgato fold-out green screen, which I don't actually think would fit behind my desk now. I still have it in case I ever need to do any green screen stuff, but I think my green screen days are very much behind me. I've got one of the floodlights that I use to give myself the cool background colors. And um, I have got a second one out from under the stairs, which is ready to plug in over this side because I thought one would be enough in a smaller room, but Dave, my dog, <laughs> comes in and sits next to it because it's warm, despite the fact there's a radiator there, that's new as well, but Dave comes and sits next to that and casts a massive shadow over the door, so I want a light on both sides so we don't get the shadow. We've got my GT Omega trusty uh, racing chair, which it's not actually the most comfortable chair in the world. I'm probably gonna upgrade that in the next year or so for something a bit better for big old man fat guy backs. And then we have the desk. Now, can I point out, before you all get on at me about the, uh, about the cable management, Nerdphonic has been in this office. He helped me set up the audio and the, uh, the camera and stuff. And he didn't complain, so if Nerdphonic's happy with it, you should be happy with it too. I have bought a uh, cable management kit off of Ikea, so the plan eventually, once I'm completely happy with everything, is to basically scoop up the cables off the floor and just attach them to the netting that you can see is at the back of the desk there, just to keep them off floor level. But for now, I'm not completely settled on the setup, so we're leaving them down there. Here we have the two PCs. That's my editing and rendering PC. You can see it's got my vlog hard drive plugged into the top of it as well. Both of these are set up on wireless connections at the moment because my router comes in in my living room, which is really frustrating. I am getting fibre to the home in the next few weeks and I'm gonna ask them to put that in this office so I can wire these in and then Wi-Fi off to the rest of the house. But that's the rendering PC. Um, specs for both the PCs will be down in the description below and that is my trusty gaming pc which has been with me for the last three years since i went full-time on youtube this is one of the best bits of kit i've bought as part of the move it's just a hook to put my headphones on 
so my headphones don't just lie around anymore, which is brilliant, and they're a great pair of headphones as well. I will link to my kit page down in the description as well, which lists um, affiliate links to all of the stuff in this office. So if you look like look at the headphones, for example, you can go into the kit page, find out the exact specs of them, and if you want to support the channel, it will link off to where you can buy them and give me a little bit of a kickback for doing it as well. You can see that there are cameras everywhere. That's one of my vlogging cameras, a GoPro. There's a couple of GoPros and GoPro chargers and things around. Um, we've got Obafemi, the Twitch stream giraffe, and my springs that I use in the streamer showdown. A football manager cup, which shouldn't be in here. It's a Trequatista cup. That should be upstairs getting washed, and that's the glue that I stuck all of the audio foam to this wall using and then we have the desktop setup so we have my three monitor setup that's my 4k gaming monitor which currently has got raid shadow legends on it because i'm obsessed if you follow me on twitch you'll know i've been playing a lot of raid shadow legends because they sponsored me but i'm now still playing it because i can't stop i've got my portrait monitor in the middle which i use for my twitch chat when i'm streaming um, and then this is the monitor for the rendering and editing editing pc you can see we've got obs up and running on there at the moment so these two monitors are connected to the gaming pc that monitor is connected to the editing pc i've then got my stream deck a little Ikea plant that I thought was going to be bigger when I bought it. Uh, my Amazon Echo, which allows me to hear when the doorbell rings, monitor the CCTV around the house, see what the kids are up to when I'm working and they're here, that kind of thing. Um, and then audio stuff is this side. So I've got my uh, Rode Procaster microphone, which is awesome, on a studio arm, which is one of the oldest bits of gear I've got in here. My dad got me that for Christmas about three or four years ago. Um, the mic and stuff has come later, but the studio arm has stayed. And then my Go XLR, which is what I use for all my sexy audio sounds. That was one of the things that Matt Nerdphonic was helping me set up recently. There's various GoPro charging things and some bells that I use to annoy people when I'm streaming. And then up here, we have the cameras. So we've got the Canon ATD. Both of these were, I didn't go out and buy two cameras just for, just for this purpose. Although I think I probably would buy one if I was um, at the point where I was still using a webcam now but wanted to go to the next level. But as a vlogger or a former vlogger, I have lots of cameras lying around the place. So this one was my old daily vlog camera that I eventually replaced with that one. Um, this, this one needed a purpose. Its purpose is now to be my face cam. It's got a nice uh, nice lens on it that allows me to get that nice bokeh, um, blurred background effect when I'm on my close-up face shot. And then this is the wider lens that we use for like the intros and stuff like you saw at the start of this video. So they're both um, wired into the editing PC via Elgato capture cards. So everything that happens on them, so if we wave to this camera, you can see it's being picked up straight into the computer. So there's no messing around with pressing record on those, moving SD cards around. It just all goes straight in there. And in fact, when I'm recording over on this PC, I have a nice little setup that captures whatever's going on on the uh, monitor of the gaming PC, plus any other cameras that I've got set up on there too. And then lastly, I've got my Elgato key lights that keep the room nicely lit, my audio foam, and this thing, which is really new. It's called a window. So you can actually see outside and get air in and stuff, which is a real novelty. And there you have it, boys and girls, your tour of the cupboard. If there's anything else you'd like to see, <laughs> there is nothing else. There's nothing else for you to see. You've seen the full extent of where the magic happens now. So I know you see that bit behind me when I'm streaming and when I'm here on YouTube, but just know that I'm looking at a sea, a wall of audio foam for most of the time when I'm making these videos. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. If you've got any questions, let me know down in the comments below. And of course, keep an eye out for FM21 beta content any moment now, any day now, could even be today. Whenever the beta drops, I'll be ready to start throwing some daily content at you again after my little extended break from daily content here on the channel as part of the house move that has led me to the cupboard. Um, thanks for watching, folks. I'll see you again very, very soon.